player flew to London on the 24th of May, landed in London on the 25th, picked up our sprinter van, which we thought we were getting picked up by a bus, and we got picked up by this like airport shuttle van, taken to a rental place. We thought, okay, we're going to this place, they're going to give us our bus. We get there, and you know, we're like, where's the bus? Well, this is your bus, right? Uh, oh. And they're starting to load gear into the back of it, and it wouldn't fit. So they were taking the cabinets out of the cases so that they would fit more of them, even though we couldn't fit all of them even doing that. Carrie was like, fuck this, let's go home. Jeff Hanneman, and generally the band did whatever Carrie wanted to do, just because nobody felt like arguing with Carrie about anything. And Jeff was like, fuck that, we came all the way here, we're fucking playing. And that was the first time in my experience with Slayer that Jeff put his foot down about anything. So we did, we stayed. They handed me a photocopy of an atlas with an X on London, like on part of, you know, up in whatever angle, part of London where it is, like this little X. So like, if I hand you a photocopy of Denver and put an X on the far left-hand side and said, this is where the football stadium is, kind of, you know what I mean? It's just like, uh, okay, no streets, nothing. Um, and then there's another X on Belgium, on this little on part of Belgium, and the guy said, the city of play is in there somewhere, mate. You should buy an atlas. <laughs> you should buy a map. And we left. We headed off in our, in our, oh, and when we asked who the driver was, we thought the guy who picked us up was our driver. And we're like, so you're driving? He was like, no, you might, you might be driving. And he handed me the keys. And it was a stick shift. I'd never driven a stick shift in my life. And it was a, it was an English stick shift. So the, so the steering wheel was on the wrong side of the car. I totally couldn't do it. So Tom would get us going. And I think Dave maybe too. And then I did a lot of the driving, but I only drove once we got on the highway. So we would switch while we were going down the road. cars moving. Yeah. <laughs> so then we, we made it. We drove. We drove to the ferry, took the ferry across. Back in those, the, the shortest way is um, Dover to Calais is the shortest way across the English Channel. But Calais is in France. And back in those days, Americans had to have visas to get to France. And it was complicated to get those visas to go to France. So, like, I don't think... Hold on a second here. So I went to Europe, 85, I went with Slayer, 87, I went with Attitude, 90, I went with Mordred, open for Overkill, 91, I went with Vicious Rumors, although I took over as Sabotage's tour manager in the middle of the tour, and that was the first time I went to France, not until 91, because the other previous tours, it wasn't worth getting visas for. Like, it wasn't, I didn't go to Paris. You would think, you know, you're going to go tour Europe. My first four European tours, I didn't go to Paris until the fourth one. Like, the first three European tours, we didn't go to fucking Paris. To my asshole, it wasn't their visa. So, we had to take the ferry to this place in Holland. I forget the name of it. Which was, so it's a longer ferry ride. It's like three times as long as a ferry ride. And then we had to drive down to Pope Ridge, where, where the Heavy Sounds Festival was. And so we leave the rental place, we drive to the ferry, we take the ferry to Holland, we drive to fucking Pope Ridge, we pull up to the Heavy Sounds Festival, no hotel, no nothing, we're just moving. We pull up to the Heavy Sounds Festival, and Doro Pesha's band, Warlock, is already on stage, and when they get off stage, they're making announcements in whatever fucking language they're making the announcements in, Belgians speak Flemish and French and, uh, you know, speak a little of everything because Belgium's like fucking 20 feet across. So they're making these announcements after the band played, and one of the announcements, they say Slayer, and UFO's the headliner. And Lee Aaron is there, who's pretty big at that point, and Pretty Mage, Tokyo Blade, Crossfire, Tobruk is the next band after Warlock. And they make announcements, and but they don't mention any other band name, but they say Slayer, and they say Slayer a couple of times. So I go find a promoter guy, and I was like, what's this announcement they're making? Why are they saying Slayer? And the guy looks at me and he's like, God, like, not terror in his eyes, but worry in his eyes. And he says, we are telling the fans that Slayer are performing, that they have arrived, they are playing. And he goes, they are here, right? Like, looking at me like, please tell me they're here. And he knows they're here because he just fucking met us getting out of the van. <laughs> you know? I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're here. We just walked in. He just walked in. Oh, very good. I go, well, who cares? It's like, why isn't this a UFO show? Why, you know? He goes, oh, no. He waves his hand towards the crowd. He goes, 8,000 people. I was like, yeah, it's fucking huge. Slayer's never played a crowd any close to that fucking big. And he's like, 5,000 for Slayer. And I'm like, 
No way. This is a UFO. No. 5,000 for Slayer. And I was like, wow. And then I go into the guys. I'd been in the dressing room when they made the announcement. So they were like, what's going on? So I went out to find a guy. So I go in the dressing room and they're like, so what's up? And I tell the guys what the guy just told me. And, uh, and Jeff goes, get the fuck out of here. And I go, hey man, all I know is what they told me. And he goes, fucking you up on this plane. And I go, according to that guy, 5,000 people are to see you guys. And so I guess there's 3,000 to see you up up. And we're like, all right, whatever. Totally not believing it. So, you know, the various other bands play. We are, you know who we are in this? Of course, yeah. I interviewed okay. her years ago. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. So she, she comes on. She it's, it's her and then Slayer and then UFO. So she comes on. She does her set. And they're scheduled to do a set, but then do an encore. So like part of, you know, they're going to come off stage. Crowd will cheer them back on to go out and they'll do an encore. So they come off stage and the whole crowd starts chanting Slayer, like the moment they walk off stage. And I don't know Lee Aaron's material, but my assumption is that, you know, they're third on the bill. That's, you know, they're fairly far up the bill. But I assume that they're going to play whatever their hit is, whatever, whoever, you know, you would do whatever the encore song is, right? So you would think that people would be looking forward to the people there for Lee Aaron, and they're third on the bill, so there's got to be a good number of people there looking for them. So you would expect that people are cheering them. No, the whole fucking crowd starts chanting for fucking Slayer, certainly the 5,000. And, like, basically chanted them off stage. They didn't come back and do their encore. I can remember those guys looking at each other like, well, fuck this. <laughs> you know? And, like, we were supposed to be off stage at whatever time we are supposed to be off stage. I don't remember exactly what Slayer Settling was, although there's a, there's a video of the show. But they are supposed to be off at a certain time. And I... Said I can remember saying to the stage manager, because, um, you know, now they're off like 10 minutes early, right? Because of their, they're, they're supposed to be a break and then the song, you know, so there's 10 minutes left in their scheduled time. And then there's whatever the set change time is to, before we go on. So we're supposed to play from, let's just say, hypothetically, from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock, right? And, and Lee Aaron's supposed to play until 4.30. Well, Lee Aaron only played until 4.20. So I said to the stage manager guy, I said, we're supposed to be off at six o'clock, right? And he goes, he's like, yes. I go, we're supposed to start at five o'clock and be off at six o'clock, right? And he says, you have to be off at six o'clock. He goes, it doesn't matter when you start. And it was just a full on old school stage manager thing. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> it's like, you can start whatever the fuck you want to start as long as you're off on time. We don't do that fit. But I'm not aware of how that stuff works. And it doesn't always work this way, depending on the situation. But I said to him, I go, so we can start early and play more as long as we're off by six. And he's like, yes. So I like run back to tell the guys, I'm like, Hey man, she's off stage 10 minutes early. My memory, and it gets this sort of fuzzy about the specifics, but my memory is that they were cutting a set. Like their normal set was maybe 65 or so. Their normal set was five minutes longer or maybe 10 minutes longer than what they were playing at this festival. So they weren't, like, bitching about it on any level. They were perfectly happy to be playing in front of that many fucking people, especially if half of the people that they said were for them were for them. Like, if 2,500 people had been there for Slayer, that was still the biggest fucking show they'd ever played, probably. So, you know, just the fans, let alone all the ancillary people there. So they had had to cut a song or two off of their normal set. So I go back and I tell them, I'm like, look, they finished early. We've got more time. You guys can do your whole set if we can get on stage fast enough. And they all looked at each other like, cool. And so they did. They, you know, we played an extra couple of songs. And then, when, man, it was so fucking great. Right now, at this instant, I'm sitting in my living room, and I have fucking goosebumps on my legs and right on my arm from the memory of them walking on stage in the middle of the fucking daylight, the evil fucking metal band, in that <laughs> fucking place going fucking crazy, man. And you see it in the video, because it's a decent video, the one on YouTube. I think it might even be real, like an officially sort of film thing, but I could be wrong. It's been years since I've seen it. But, like, the smiles on their fucking faces, <laughs> they're not evil. <laughs> they're like, holy fuck. <laughs> Look, Ma, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome, man. Because it was such so, so fucking hell to get there. We're, we're, we're just kids from California. We've never been anywhere. I mean, we've, we've driven across country and stuff. But, you know, flying 
So London from LA is far. We definitely flew coach. We may or may not have been anywhere near. Back in those days, there was a smoking section. And I don't know if you were old enough to have flown when there were smoking sections. Oh, sure. But, you know, sure. it, the, there's smoke everywhere, basically, because it doesn't, the smoke itself doesn't care about what section it's in. So we're on this long ass fucking flight, but we're excited. We're going to fucking Europe, man. You know, none of us have ever been to Europe. And it's like, we land. We get disappointment. There's, what, that's not a bus. Oh, that just must be our ride. Oh, this is our bus? Oh, we're the driver? Oh, it, it's just brutal. L.A. to fucking Pope in Belgium. We didn't. We slept in airline seats. We slept in a splitter van. No hotel, no bed, no shower. We don't know the food. We don't know the fucking vehicles along the side of the road, at least for the beginning. Now we're in Europe. And, you know, the continent, they, they drive the right side of the road. But now our steering wheel is on the wrong side of the car still. And then all of a sudden, it's like, wow, this. I mean, I'm not... Obviously, I, I'm a passenger, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, on the side of it, watching it. It's just like, but all of us, it's just like you're part of it on a certain level, you know what I mean? And it's like, this is why we fucking did all the fucking shit we did, <laughs> you know? Spinning out in the fucking black ice in Montana last fall on our way to Winnipeg and all the bullshit that you go through on tour, living in Metal Joe's basement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's, to me, it was like, and we talked about it later, it was like, man, it was like a whole, 5,000 people there for Slayer. It was like, fucking everybody was there for Slayer. Fucking crazy. And then we went and played a club the next day. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it was fucking awesome. And so what <laughs> but even the clubs, it was like, we did a couple of clubs where people were like, yeah, there's not going to be anybody at that show. Why not? Well, because there's just nobody in that city. Well, why are we playing there then? Well, we needed to get you guys to show somewhere, and so it makes you a couple bucks. So, oh, okay. And then the fucking place would be packed. Like, everybody was excited about them coming. The conversation that I was having, that we were having about how Venom was terrible, there was never, there was no one in the continent of Europe having a similar conversation about Slayer. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Everybody in Europe was like, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was awesome. Do you remember when they got off the stage after everybody was just going ape shit? Like from the moment they walked on stage, it was just triumph. Coming yeah. off stage was like, like you've never seen a metal band that happy. Mm-hmm.